The word force suggests something close and immediate in its effect, something more directly compelling than power. The phrase physical force is really only a more explicit expression of the same idea, for power in its lower and cruder manifestations is always better described as force, it is by force, for example, that prey is seized and carried to the mouth. When force gives itself time in which to operate it becomes power, but when the moment of crisis arrives, the moment of irrevocable decision, it reverts to being pure force. Power is more general and operates over a wider space than force, it includes much more, but is less dynamic. It is more ceremonious and even has a certain measure of patience. The distinction between force and power can be illustrated very simply by the relationship between cat and mouse. The cat uses force to catch the mouse, to seize it, hold it in its claws and ultimately kill it. But while it is playing with it another factor is present. It lets it go, allows it to run about a little and even tum its back, and, during this time, the mouse is no longer subjected to force. But it is still within the power of the cat and can be caught again. If it gets right away it escapes from the eat sphere of power, but, up to the point at which it can no longer be reached, it is still within it. The space which the cat dominates, the moments of hope it allows the mouse, while continuing however to watch it closely all the time and never relaxing its interest and intention to destroy it all this together, space, hope, watchfulness and destructive intent, can be called the actual body of power, or, more simply, power itself inherent in power, therefore, as opposed to force, is a certain extension in space and in time. I suggested earlier that the mouth was the prototype of the prison. There is in any case a relationship between the two which will serve to illustrate the relationship between force and power. Once inside his enemy's mouth the victim has no hope left, for he has neither time nor space to maneuver in. In both these respects a prison is like an extension of the mouth. Like a mouse under the eyes of a cat the prisoner can walk up and down a little and can tum his back on his warders, he has time before him, in course of which he can hope to escape or be released. But the whole machinery of the prison, in one cell of which he is confined, seems geared to his destruction and he is conscious of it all the time, even when it is not actually in operation. The distinction between force and power can be seen in another quite different sphere, that of the varying degrees of religious submission. Everyone who believes in God believes that he is continuously in his power and, in his own way, has come to terms with it. But there are those for whom this is not enough. They await some sharp intervention, some direct act of divine force, which they can recognize and feel as such. They live in expectation of God's commands, for them he has the cruder features of a ruler. His active will and their active and explicit submission in each particular case become the core of their religion. Religions of this kind incline to the doctrine of predestination, their adherents are always able to feel that everything which happens to them is a direct expression of God's will. Thus, all their lives, they find fresh occasions to submit. It is as though they were already in God's mouth, to be crushed in the next instant. But they have to live their whole lives in this terrible place, undaunted by it and still striving to do right. Islam and Calvinism are the religions which exhibit this trend most strongly. Their believers yearn for God's force, his power alone does not satisfy them, it is too distant and leaves them too free. The state of continuous expectation of command, to which, early in life, they surrender themselves for good and all, marks them deeply and also has a momentous effect on their attitude to other people. It creates a soldierly type of believer, men to whom battle is the truest representation of life and who feel no fear in actual battles because for them the whole of life is a battle. 